Welcome back to Sanford Flip Math. Uh, this is pre-calculus, and we are again working from the Demanowitz Foley Kennedy book. So you might see some uh, little snapshots from the pages, uh, fifth edition, and. We are deep in the throes of section 2.1. Uh, we're talking about polynomials, linear, uh, specifically linear and quadratic functions. And uh, this whole chapter is going to be about those ideas. Uh, last time we spent a fair amount of time talking about how to write linear equations. Uh, we're making some assumptions about graphing linear equations. And uh, now we're talking about quadratic functions. And what we're going to specifically look at uh, today, uh, well, last time we started out by uh, working in vertex form uh, when we're talking about uh, the quadratic functions. And so, for instance, this one uh, has a vertex of negative 1, negative 3. And so if I wanted to do a little quick graph, uh, there's a vertex. And uh, be normally I would go right 1 and up 1. But since this has that multiplier out there, I'm going to go right 1 and up 2. And remember, the symmetry uh, lets me do that on the left side also. And I know some people would like us to do more points. I'm going to stick with that. Well, so now the question is, what if instead this was in a different form? Like that form. I know that was pretty cool, wasn't it? All right, so if we start with this form, so th this is in standard form. It, everything's all multiplied out and uh, kind of handled. Uh, I mean, it's all the like terms are combined, and it's in descending order of degree. It's something x squared plus something x plus something without an x. And if there are missing terms, that's fine. You just blow right over them. Okay, but so if I'm in that form, the question is, how do I get to this form? And that process is called completing the square. Okay, now before I actually do that process, I want to take just a minute and kind of remind you of some factoring issues and multiplying issues, okay? So we'll come back to that. So off to the side somewhere, you can make note of this. If I do x plus 1 times x plus 1, if I multiply this out, foil it out, however you, whatever, however you keep track of it, x squared, first times first, outer, inner, and last times last. So this is x squared plus 2x plus 1. Okay. What it, now, worth noting that this is the same thing as x plus 1 squared. If I have x plus 3 squared, this is x plus 3 times x plus 3, I have x squared 6x plus 9. Please note that I cannot just square the x and the 3. Now, mind you, x squared and 3 squared are in there. But there's that whole x times 3 and 3 times x that happened there. So that's, that's where that 6x happened. So there's kind of like a 3x plus 3x that comes out of this. Okay. Okay. Well, let's do one more like that. What if it was x minus 5 squared? Well, this is going to be x squared. Yes, there's going to be a 25 on the end. But notice, I got a little ahead of myself. Goodbye. Notice that there's going to be a negative 5x and a negative 5x, the same way there was the 3x is there. So negative 5x and a negative 5x is negative 10x. Okay. Now, what I want you to see here is look at this 2 and that 1. Look at this 6 and that 9. Think about where they came from. This 2 came from 1 plus 1. And 1 times 1 was that. This came from 3 plus 3, and 3 times 3 gave us that 9. This came from negative 5 plus negative 5, and negative 5 times negative 5 is 21, or excuse me, is 25. Okay, so watch this. What if I have x squared plus 4x plus 4, and what I want to do is take this apart and write something squared? This is a perfect square. Now remember, there were two things added together to get negative 10x. There were two things added together to get 6x. There were two things added together to get 2x. So what two things were added together to get 4x if this was a perfect square? Well, it had to be 2x plus 2x. In other words, half of the 4x. So half of 4... 
is 2, and if it was squared, that would be that 4 right there. So this had to have come from x plus 2 times x plus 2. Now, just if that freaked you out, just stop, rewind it, hear it again, and, and multiply this out and see if it works. Okay? What if I have uh, x squared minus, uh, let, let's do uh, 8x plus 16. So the question is, this is a perfect square. What was multiplied? So half of 8 squared is the 16. So this is a perfect square, and it's based on x minus 4 squared. Okay. I want to do one other thing with this. What if I have x squared minus 12x, and I want to force it to be a perfect square? I, this is not a perfect square right now. I want to make this into something squared. So I'm going to look at half of 12, half of negative 12, and I'm going to square it. I would add 36 to this. Now this is a perfect square. So it's half of b squared is what gives me the c. Okay. This then would factor into, remember that half of number we had right here? x minus 6 squared. Okay, one more. Same thing, just one more of them. Okay, x plus 5, I'm sorry, x squared plus 5x. So my question is, what are we going to add here, and then what's it going to factor into? And again, the goal is a perfect square. Well, half of b. Oh, Mr. Sanford, are you serious? Really? So 5 over 2. Well, you can leave it 5 over 2 if you want. So this would be plus. Now, if you're going to, so half of 5 squared, so that's going to be 25 over 4. Really, Mr. Sanford, fractions? Yep. X plus that half of number goes right here. It's really not that big of a deal. Okay, now, for those of you following along at home, okay, sh which should be everybody, if you wanted, you could have done x, uh, excuse me, fractions or decimals. Okay, I'll get the right word eventually. Half of 5 is 2.5. Square it, 6.25. Now I have completed the square. That's where the phrase comes from. Okay, bang, bang, tap, tap. Sorry. It's just how this works. And there it is. So the half of number still goes there. Notice these really are the same thing. All right. Meanwhile, we were back on this problem. Now, of course, I picked an ugly problem, and I'm sorry. We will do some easier ones after this one. I personally, now, just so you know, my approach to this might be slightly different from what you may have done last year in Algebra 2. And it's equivalent. So if you are locked into your method from last year, then Happy New Year, you are fine. I, I can handle that. If not, then, you know, if that didn't seem to work for you, then maybe this will. Okay, first of all, I am not a big fan of these constant numbers. I want to, okay, keep it, sorry, keep in mind the goal. This is the goal. I want it to look like this when I'm done. Okay. All right. I'm going to get this negative 1 out of the way by adding 1 to both sides. And really, all I'm doing is getting it out of the way. Okay. Now, the next concern I have is this 2 is also in the way. And just, just a reminder, every single one of these that we did just a second ago did not have a coefficient in front of the x squared, did not have an a there. Okay. So, just so you know, n none of these. So, in order to do the completing the square thing, I'm going to take this a and I'm going to factor it out. Okay, So y plus 1 stays the same. I'm going to factor out. I'm going to undistribute. So now this is x squared plus 2x. Okay, So I, I divided out a 2. I factored out a 2 from both of these. They are right there. Now, So this is the beginning of sometimes in some books and some teachers teach that you would divide both sides by 2. And, and so if that's you, there, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just I find that sometimes people freak out when they see that fraction. So I don't usually do it that way. You can do it that way. Uh, both methods have their issues. Okay, So 
just so you know. I'm, I'm going to do it the way I'm showing you. Okay, so now, this is where I, I want that square to be. This is going to be that square. So now this is what I'm going to do, what I just did on the other sheet, the other slide. Half of 2, and then I'm going to square it. Well, half of 2 is 1, squared is 1. Now, here's where the fun begins. Some people have you add and subtract on the same side of the equation. I don't do that, and the main reason is I know that for many years now, you've been adding and subtracting on both sides. See, here's the problem. I just stuck something there that wasn't there already, and I can't just do that. I have to balance things. So I need to do something over on the other side to balance out what just happened. Now, before you get excited, I didn't really add just one there. I added one, but I need you to know that there is a little number out here multiplying that one. So this is really a 2 in disguise. Sneaky, isn't it? So on the other side, to balance that adding of 1 times 2, I need to add 2 over here. So let's just kind of put together what we got so far. Okay, and remember that this is going to factor now into x plus 1 squared. Okay, now there's some stuff kind of running together here, in a, and so I'm just going to make some room, and you remember if you need to see that, you can rewind. Okay, one more step, and then this problem is done. I want y equals, so I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. Okay, that's it. Okay, I want to do two more of these. Okay, two more. Uh, one that's a little nicer, and another one that's ugly. Okay, so... Here we go. Let's do another. Ooh, not that. That was the other page. All right, here we go. Okay, so again, the goal is put this in vertex form. You know what? I think your book calls vertex form standard form, and my standard form is general form. That's frustrating. Sorry. problem with working with different books over the years. All right, vertex form. There's no denying what vertex form is. It is the form that shows the vertex. So here we go. First step, get the constant out of the way. Okay, so for those of you following along, constant out of the way. Yep. Second step, if there's an a, if there's a number in front of the x squared, factor it out. Okay, I hate writing down steps like this, but I know it's helpful, so it's all good. Okay, so next up, there, there was no a here. There's, it's just one, you don't need to factor it out. Third step, complete the square and balance. Okay, in that very same step, you have to do, on the same version of the equation, you have to do everything on both sides. Okay, so here's the complete the square thing. You're going to do b over 2 squared. So this, this is the b. So 10 over 2 squared. So in other words, 5 squared plus 25. Okay, so 5 squared is 25. Now, just again a reminder, if there was something multiplying out here, you would have to distribute that over so that when you balanced on the other side, it would take that into account. Okay. Next step. Factor the perfect square. Okay, so factor the perfect square. So, and, and, and combine like terms, etc. You know, any simplifying as you go along. So, y plus 26 equals... Well, this is going to factor into something squared, and that something is going to involve half of b. So well, x plus 5, in other words. Okay. And then the last thing we need to do is solve for y. In, in other words, make it y equals. Okay. So minus 26. And if you prefer to write that f of x or whatever, that's fine. Okay. All right. That's the whole thing for that one. I want to do one more. 
just the same kind of thing. It's just, just a little more exciting. Okay. All right. So uh, you're going to love this. Okay. And by love this, I mean you are not going to love this. All right. Here we go. First step, get one out of the way. Next step, if there is an A, factor it out. So it's still y plus 1 equals negative 1 half. Okay, so, and then on the inside, I'm going to have x squared. Now, here's, here's where the fun begins. Okay, remember that when you are factoring something out, you're, real, you're unmultiplying. You are undistributing. Okay, so when, you, when you're factoring, you are unmultiplying, also known as dividing you are undistributing. Well, if that's true, then I need to really do negative 3 divided by negative 1 half. Now, please note that I said divided by. I did not say negative 3 times 1 half, and half of 3 is 1.5. That is not what I said. Negative 3 divided by 1 half is 6. Okay, play that one back and forth a few times. Okay. The check on this you know, to double check you did it right, is go back and redistribute. That's how you check factoring, is remultiply it out. Negative one-half times x squared, yep. Negative one-half times six, well, half of six, this is multiplying, is three, make it negative, yep. Okay, so, so just, you know, oh, dude, that's, that was not what I wanted to do. Sorry, I got a little excited there. I wanted to undo, that was it. Sorry about that. Okay, so, this is good. Now I'm at a spot where I can complete the square. So half of 6 is 3, squared is 9. But when I add this over here, I have to balance things out. So I need to add a negative half of 9. Half of 9 is 4.5, so negative 4.5, or if you'd prefer, you can write negative 9 over 2. Okay. So y minus 3.5, all I'm doing is combining like terms and factoring. Remember that when you factor, it's, it's the half of b. And last thing, get y by itself. Okay, so what we've done in this little video lesson here um, is really just focus on completing the square as a process for putting the equation, uh, taking it from what I call standard form to, fa uh, excuse me, to uh, vertex form. Okay, I'm leaving it at that. And uh, anything else in the section that we need to deal with, we'll just deal with in class. Um, but uh, I want you to have time to digest this. Okay, my recommendation is go back now. You've seen three of them done fully. Go back, start with one, and, and just write down the problem. Do it yourself and see if you get what I did. And if you didn't, then you know you can just rewind and watch it again. Okay, see you in class.